Johnny Dollar. Fred Larkin, Johnny, at New Jersey Fire and Casualty. Fred. I hope I didn't get you out of bed. Well, you certainly did, but don't give it a second thought. How are you, Freddy? Pretty good. How are things in the grand old historical city of Trenton? Well, here in Trenton, fine. A little farther south, though, I'm not so sure. Like where, for instance? Like just outside of a little town called Woodbine. Remember it? Woodbine? Yeah, you handled a case for us down there three or four years ago. Oh, sure, sure, I remember. Some crook with a mattress factory pulled the old stunt of billing his clients more than they actually paid for the stuff he sold them. Right. Not knowing about that little trick, we'd give them insurance for the amount shown on those phony bills. Double what they paid. And when something happened to the merchandise... Sure, they collected twice as much from us as they were entitled to. Real nice people down there. <laughs> well, what goes this time? A couple of fires. Oh? Arson? That's what I hope you can find out. Any reason for suspicion? Yes, I think so. Like what? Well, why don't you run on down here and let me tell you all, hmm? And Johnny... Yeah, if what I think is going on is going on, if you can put a stop to it before we have to pay for any more losses, well, you can figure on not only your expense account, but a nice big fat commission to boot. Freddie, you speak the language I love to hear. I'm on the way. <laughs> CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the New Jersey Fire and Casualty Insurance Company, Home Office, Trenton, New Jersey. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the terrible torch matter. Expense account item one, twenty dollars and a half, and that covers a taxi out to Bradley Field, then plane fare to Philadelphia, PA. Item two is fifty bucks deposit on a rental car. I headed north on Lucky 13, crossed the Delaware at Moritz, than George Washington did, I might say, and landed in Trenton, the Jersey State Capitol, shortly after noon. Since Fred Larkin's office is right there on State Street, I made like a starving Armenian. He took the cue and hauled me over to Hildebrecht's for lunch. What makes me believe it was arson and there'll be more of it? Well, I'll tell you, Johnny. You think there'll be more of it, Freddy? Unless you can throw a monkey wrench in the works. How well do you remember Woodbine, Johnny? Oh, I don't know. It's mostly farm country down there, as I recall. That's right. And acres and acres of sandy soil, scrub oak, and pine trees. But in the little town itself, there's a hat factory, a couple of dress factories, and the Golden Bedding Corporation, the plant you investigated before. And which one of them burns? Uh, no, no. The two fires that we've had to pay for so far. Two? Two. They occurred just outside of Woodbine, about halfway between Woodbine and Dennisville. Mm-hmm. Uh, because those plants in town I mentioned seemed to have done pretty well, some promoter came along, bought up a couple of hundred acres, and promoted a little industrial section big enough for nearly being the factories. I see. Well, it's sort of a funny place for that kind of thing, though, isn't it, Freddie? Well, that's just the point, Johnny. It's a lousy place for such an operation. Mm. Too far from many of the regular supply sources. A long, long way to ship their finished goods. All their fuel and power have to be imported. Labor's hard to get and so on. Yeah. In other words, the big pitch for those companies to get out of the high rent, high labor cost area didn't mean a thing. They've been slowly but surely going broke. Mm. And there's nothing like a good fire to pay off the bills, provided there's plenty of insurance. Right. And like I said, there have been two of them so far. And I'm afraid there are going to be more. Why, Freddy? Well, simply because an idea like that, when it pays off so nicely, and when it can be gotten away with, can be very catching. You have a point there. Mm. When you say gotten away with, does that mean the police were able to find no signs of arson? Right. But when you talk about the police, don't forget how small that town is now. Uh, when was the last fire? About a week ago. A week? And you wait till now to call me? I know, I know, I know. But I only found out about the second one yesterday. Uh, afraid that means a pretty cold trail. But I'll see what I can do. Good. Now, how many factories are there in that little complex? About a dozen, did you say? Eleven, Johnny. 
And here's the point. Yeah. Eight of them are owned by people who are one way or another related to each other. Hmm. No wonder you're afraid the idea might spread. Right. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call in some help. In the form of Smokey Sullivan. Smokey Sullivan? That's right. Smokey? Yep. <laughs> uh, that sounds like the name of somebody who'd commit arson. <laughs> He's one of the best, Freddy. What? Smokey probably has set more successful fires than you and I ever heard of. He got away with it for years. Well, then I, I, I don't understand. Well, since doing time, he's gone legit. And is of more help to me over the past four years than anybody else I can think of. Well, just the same, Joe. Well, he knows more about firebugs, their methods, their eccentricities, the little trademarks that some of them leave behind than any man alive, believe me. That's why he's been of such use to me. Oh, okay, Johnny, if you say so. You know what his job is right this minute? What? He's a kind of consultant for an arson squad up in Boston. It's been made a matter of public knowledge. As a result, arson up there is pretty much a thing of the past. No kidding. No kidding. Well, in that case, of course. He's on the payroll, too? Oh, whatever you say. Good. Uh, one more thing, Fred. Yes? Is there any kind of a bank there in Woodbine? I don't know. I, I, I imagine not. But there's a, a loan office that I guess kind of serves as a bank. Mm -hmm. I know that some of our checks have been cashed through it. Good. Not much more than a one-man operation, though, I understand. All the better. Is it? Why? Well, could be a mighty good source of information for me. Oh? Yep. How? And for what kind of information? That's just... Wait and see. Item three is a total of 4140. Covers a long-winded phone call to Boston, then Smokey Sullivan's plane fare, and finally dinner and hotel accommodations for the two of us there in Trenton. Yeah, but uh, Johnny, where can that racket down there in South Jersey in such a little one-horse town like that? Well, why not, Smokey? Without a smart metropolitan police force to contend with, be a cinch for a good torch man. Sure. I'm going for him to get away with it. And certainly a whole string of factories, no matter how small, could promise enough loot to make it worthwhile for him. Mm -hmm. Another thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, Johnny. A lot of those plants are owned by people related to each other. Oh. Who got suckered into setting up and operating in that unlikely place by some smart promoter. Now, if that family group all came from one place, like, well, from one big city... Maybe that'll give us the key as to where they dug up their firebug. Who knows? Maybe that gang has used an arsonist before, or wherever they operated before. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe so, yeah, yeah. Smokey, the point is that if a couple of them have found out what they think is the answer to their financial troubles, the rest of them are liable to try it, right? Well, yeah, if it was arson, John. That's what you've got to find out for me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Early the next morning in my rental car, we headed south through what's known as the Piney Country, passing towns with such colorful names as Mount Holly, Indian Mills, through Hamilton, Mays Landing, and Tuckahoe. Finally, Woodbine. After signing into the motel, I gave Smokey the car keys and told him he was on his own while I paid a visit to the loan office. Smokey understood and took off. As for the loan office, it was just what Fred had thought, a one-man operation. And as for the owner, Mr. Hanley M. Becker... What's that, what? You 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 want to know what, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Dollar, did you say it is, Dollar? That's right. Johnny Dollar. Yeah. What's your business here? Well, huh? I'm a special investigator, Mr. Becker, for the company that's insured a lot of people and property down here in this section. Uh, investigator, That's huh? right. And I want to know the financial condition of every one of the 11 factories at that little industrial complex outside of town. Well, then, uh, why come to me? Well, don't you function as a kind of a bank for some of these people? Well, of course I do, but... <laughs> What's the matter with you, young man? Don't you realize that anything like that is is is, is uh, completely uh, confidential? Is um, is 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 nobody's business but the banks and the uh, the the the, uh, the 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 companies? <laughs> Why, what kind of a banker do you think I am? Eh? I'm beginning to wonder. Well, you can keep right on wondering. Besides, there aren't eleven of them out there anymore. There's only nine. Thanks to a couple of fires. Yes, blasted. And if the insurance company doesn't pay off on those those those, those, those fires, no, don't you worry, boy. I'll, 
I'll collect on those loans somehow. Then you have loaned those factory owners quite a bit of money, hmm? Well, of course I have. Of course I... I, 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 te- I tell you it's none of your business. Well, I think it is. Well, you just just tell that insurance company of yours to pay off. Pay off on those losses so, so I can get back to back back. Get back my money on the on the two that that burned down. Even if those fires were set. Yes, even if they, if they were. What? What'd you say? How do you know? Well, I don't. Well, how do you know that they? Were... What? What was that? Huh? I said I don't know. Not for sure, that is. But I intend to find out. Yeah. Because yeah. if they were, Mister Becker, and if the owners can be tied into it. Or you or anybody else concerned. Me? Believe me, there will be no payment of insurance. You can bank on that. But, 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 well, <laughs> there's no insurance, and, uh, well, then what will I... Well, I just say, they, they don't... They, well, what I mean is... And, and, and you're accusing me? No, 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 just, just calm down. Oh, yes, yes, sure, calm down. Well, but these, 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 these things you're saying, now, Mr. Dollar... let's take I... things one at a time, shall we? I said you've loaned them a lot of money, haven't you? Well, yeah, yeah, well, they they, they had to pay off on the property when that p- p- promoter up north threatened to put them out of business. And what about the workers, the, 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 the help? They had to build a lot of living accommodations for them, didn't they? Well, did they? From what I understand, Mr. Oh, yes, Becker. yes, 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 you're right. There are no workers anymore. Well, <laughs> that means there's not enough workers to hmm, speak of. You mean they're out of business? Oh, yes, practically, practically. Nothing much in use out there but the warehouses where they keep their goods. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff they'll probably never use now. But if 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 they 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 don't pay off on their loans, well, <laughs> I'll just have to take over and get what I can for those plants. Here's the ones that are 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 left. That is. Not if they burn down first. Not. What'd you say? Huh? Use your head, Mister Becker. If they're burned out the way the first two were. And if we find out that there was arson involved... You you really do think that there might be other fires? Oh, but, 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 but good heavens, Mr. Dollar, don't you, don't, don't you see what, what that would mean? <laughs> I mean, if, if they're arson, like you say, why, 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 don't you realize that would ruin me? Ruin me? Possibility, isn't it? Oh, my, oh, my, oh, my, oh, my. Oh, please, please, now, don't let it happen. It, it mustn't, mustn't, mustn't happen, Mr. Dollar. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you anything you want to know, anything, anything you, 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 you want to know. Just, just, just please, please, ask, ask me. Well, Mr. Just... Becker, for the moment, I think I've learned enough. Oh, but I, 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 I haven't told you anything. Oh, you haven't, hmm? <laughs> I went back to the motel and waited for Smokey to come in with a report on what he'd learned at the scene of the two fires. Noon came and I went out for a bite of lunch. That's item four, a dollar ten. At two p.m., he still hadn't returned. It's funny. He could usually take one good look at the remains of a fire and know almost immediately if it had been sent. So perhaps he had found something to really get to work on. I hope so. But to go ahead without telling me... That wasn't like him. When he hadn't appeared by five o'clock, I left word where I'd be and went back to the loan office. Mr. Becker was just about to lock up for today. Oh, uh, hold everything, Mr. Becker. Eh? Who's that? Oh, oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Oh, it's, it's, it's quite all right, Mr. Dollar. Here, come in, come in, come in, please. Thanks. Yeah, I, uh, I've been thinking about... What you told me this morning, Mr. 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 Dollar. Yes? And, and if you're right, if you're right, why, come in, come in. Oh, oh, you, uh, you are in, aren't you? Uh, yes. Just a couple of other things I need to know, Mr. Becker, and then a favor that I want to ask. Oh, anything, Mr. Dollar. I mean, I mean, All right, now, these factory owners that you loaned the money to. Yeah, for labor, housing, and uh, plant improvement. For uh, additional uh, 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 trucks and, and materials. Thousands, Mr. Dollar, thousands. Oh, I'm sure. Yes, yes. They just didn't realize, well, none of us realized that they wouldn't be able to, to make a go-go go, go of things like the hat factory, the, the clothing factories here in town. Yes. These uh, old established factories have, have no labor problem or a, a housing problem because they use people, people you know, from, from right here, the, the, the people the people here in town, yes. unlike these, these new newcomers. All right, now, Mr. Becker, these newcomers, where did they come from? What? Oh, come from? 
Oh, well, uh, from uh, up in, in, in North Jersey, from up around Patterson. You know, when all the, the mills, the, uh, the silk business and all the others, when they, when they went into a, 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 a slump up there. All uh, right. Now, if I remember correctly, there were several big arson jobs up there. That means torch men were available. That means these people would know about them, would know where to contact them if they wanted to. Well, I... Uh, so if Smokey's uh, found out what I suspect he had... Uh, Smokey? My co-worker on this case. Oh, and oh. apparently Mr. Beckery's found out something. But where and what it is, I don't know yet, because he has my car with him. Do you need a car? Well, here. Here, please, you use mine. There, you see? It, it's it's the one out there in front. Here, take keys. Well, thank you. And and if you need me, if I can be of any help to you... Just I'll... give me some directions. I wondered. But no, it didn't make sense. He was no actor, and his worry and excitement looked genuine. Yet, of course, you can never be sure... Following directions, I headed south on 557 and after a couple of miles, cut over toward the old Dennisville Road. And there it was. The group of nine factories, obviously not in operation, and a couple of storage buildings and warehouses, all with weeds growing up around them. The same applied to a group of cottages. Shacks would be a better word, scattered out among some pine trees nearby. And then I saw my rental car. Not beside one of the burned-out buildings, but next to a big, windowless warehouse. There was no sign of Smokey Sullivan. But a metal side door on that storage building was open. Had he found another setup for a fire there inside of it? Well, it was one way to find out. Smokey! Smokey, are you inside there? Smokey? You in here? I wonder if there's a light switch around here somewhere. Smokey? Smokey? Smokey, can you hear me? Are you still alive? Smokey? Good Lord. This year, the YMCA marks its 50th anniversary of its work with and for foreign students in this country. This is just one of the countless valuable services the Y performs in your community. Right now, during National YMCA Week, your local Y invites everyone, boys and girls, young men and women, and family groups of all races and creeds to join in its activities. The Y also needs volunteer leaders. Get more out of life. Join and support your YMCA. There was still a light in Smokey Sullivan. I carried him gently to the car and drove him back to the motel in Woodbine. There, thanks to the ministrations of Dr. Rosenberg, a local medico, well, I still can't believe it, but by the time the doctor left, half an hour later... Johnny, you think... Now, uh, take it easy, <laughs> Smokey. You were badly beaten. Well, do you think some stupid torch man like him could knock me off, huh? Smokey, will you lie back now and relax? <laughs> I'm too tough, John. I don't care how tough you are. You've got to take it easy for a while. It was Pete. What? Pete Larison, Johnny. Larison? Yeah, from up in Patterson. Oh? Yeah, yeah. They all ties together. Yeah. Why did he do this to you, Smokey? Does Pete Larison know that you're working with me now? Well, I guess... <laughs> I guess he thought I was trying to muscle in his territory. But if he saw you go there, Johnny... And if he knows, if he knows who you are... Well, how could he? Well, you think he wouldn't? They all do. Oh, Johnny. Now, listen. If you know him, if you know what he looks look, like, as Johnny. soon as we get you back on your feet... We... Look, better yet, just give me a description of him. No, no, now listen to yeah. me. Tonight, he's going to fire that warehouse tonight. Tonight? Yeah, yeah, and listen. Well, it's after dark right now. I better get going. But, Johnny... Smokey, I want you to settle back and rest. <coughs> About the others, Johnny. Forget it. If I stop him on this one, there won't be any others. No, no, what I mean by the others... When I got back to the warehouse and with a flashlight now, there wasn't a soul around the place. I thought... 
as I slowly opened that side door again, I was almost knocked over by the smell of gasoline fumes. Then as I quietly swung the door closed and flattened against the wall, feeling around for a switch, suddenly all the lights went on. Don't reach for anything but the ceiling, Johnny Dollar. That's right. I see. You're Larison. That's right. Pete Larison. And you'd pull that trigger inside this gasoline-loaded place? Be a lot better than giving you a chance to draw and pull off a shot at me. No, wouldn't it? Walter. Yeah, Pete? What? Right here in back of you, Dollar, so don't try nothing. You feel this? Oh, yeah, I feel it. Take his gun away, Walter. I'm sure he has one. Sure. Okay, I got it. Have you seen, Dollar, the elaborate preparations I've made for the little fire that we're to have here tonight? And because of all the heavy upholstery material that's stored in here, it looked to the stupid police as though it all went up because of spontaneous combustion. The elaborate preparation was right. Long, narrow strips of heavy felt soaked with gasoline spread out from where he stood like the rays of a spider's web. And the strips led to various stacks of upholstery material and piles of cardboard cartons he'd also soaked with gasoline. Then moving toward me, he unrolled another heavy strip of felt, the main fuse for his operation. And you see, Dollar, all I have to do now is set a short candle on the end of this fuse right here by the door. So, then after planting you in here, I light the candles. And don't you see if they can identify what's left of you? <laughs> and if they do by any chance suspect arson, they'll think that you set this off. You, the great Johnny Dollar. Don't you know that Smokey Sullivan is still alive? They'd take his word against my perfect alibi. What alibi? By the time the candle burns down and starts the blaze, Walter and I will be sitting at his home with poor, foolish old Hanley Becker playing pinochle. Then he doesn't know about this. Becker? He doesn't know anything. He thinks we're just a couple of suckers from the city who might buy some of his overpriced farmland. No, Dollar. The only ones who know are the plant owners who've hired us. Well, thanks for that information. It's too late to do you any good. Walter. Yeah, Pete? While I take care of Dollar, you get those gasoline cans out to where we hid the car. Oh, yeah, sure. Just these two of them, ain't there? Yeah. Sure. Things happened much faster than I can tell you about it. As Walter hosted his gun and turned to pick up the gasoline cans, I shifted my weight, and then as he passed in front of me and kicked open the door, I spun around against it. Grabbed away one of the cans, threw it over at Pete, and rolled out the door tight against the ground. And that's where Pete made his big mistake. In that room full of gasoline fumes, he pulled off a couple of shots. And went up. rolled me a hundred yards or so across that sandy ground, and I came to only a couple of minutes later. Walter, who was blown against the side of my car, ended up with a concussion. It's for Pete. Well, I don't think I need to tell you. And that's it, Freddy. The company can prosecute the factory owners any way it seems fit. Expense account total, including a chunk for Smokey, damage to the rental car and the trip home, Call it 1500 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the biggest blunder that I've ever made. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., music supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Leon Janney as Hanley Becker, Sam Bray as Fred Larkin, Mason Adams as Pete Larison, Larry Haynes as Smokey Sullivan, and James Dimitri as Walter. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hannah speaking. Get the news firsthand and in full, the expanded CBS News on CBS Radio Network.